Congestive heart failure is a condition that is often difficult to manage, diagnose, and track. However, a promising new marker for congestive heart failure status is being explored. In this video, we'll be going over the hormone pro-BMP, what it is, how it is used in a clinical setting, and why you should care. When the ventricles of the heart stretch, it signals for the release of the hormone pro-BMP to reduce the stretching by managing blood pressure and volume. This is often marked by an increase in urine output and constriction of blood vessels. By decreasing blood pressure and volume, the ventricles of the heart experience less stretching, thereby decreasing the stress exerted onto the heart. This is one of the ways that your body attempts to compensate for congestive heart failure. Now, what is so important about pro-BMP? Pro-BMP levels, which are tested for using a blood test, can potentially be used to support one's diagnosis. Additionally, it can be used as a marker for one's condition and how effective their treatment plan has been. However, one area of difficulty is establishing the normal and the disease levels of pro-BMP for congestive heart failure. As a result, the range used for normal and disease states often differs slightly from source to source and between clinicians. This is another reason as to why pro-BMP has been difficult to use independently for diagnosis and management. So as it should instead be used in conjunction with another test that are performed by a clinician. The test can then be as a means to support one's diagnosis and tracking of their disease progression. An example of the normal and elevated ranges of pro-BMP include those provided by the Cleveland Clinic, which indicates that a level less than 125 picograms per milliliter in patients aged 0 to 75 and that less than 450 picograms per milliliter in those aged older than 75 is normal. An elevated range would be considered greater than 450 picograms per milliliter for those aged under 50 years old or more than 900 picograms per milliliter for those aged over 50 years. As mentioned before, pro-BMP levels in your body increase when there's increased pressure within the heart and stress on the heart muscle. In cases of heart failure, pro-BMP levels tend to indicate the severity and the progression of the disease. With increased levels, there's an increase in the severity. Additionally, pro-BMP levels tend to go back to normal or near normal level with treatment of heart failure. Levels of pro-BMP are also predictive of future fatality and risk of cardiovascular events. It is important to note that there are natural pro-BMP level variations in different pop individuals. This could be due to differences in age, sex, and body weight. In fact, the older someone is, the higher their pro-BMP levels are likely to be. Additionally, obesity is actually associated with lower levels of pro-BMP. Differences in pro-BMP levels in males and females have also been noted. These individual differences are important to consider when interpreting one's pro-BMP levels and for diagnosis and tracking of heart failure, if this test was to be used. Pro-BMP levels can also be elevated due to other conditions though, not just heart failure. These include some cardiovascular related conditions such as hypertension, valvular heart disease, and ischemia, and some other non-cardiovascular related conditions such as pulmonary diseases, renal dysfunction, sepsis, and anemia. Generally speaking, treatment has been found to overall reduce pro-BMP levels in those with congestive heart failure back to normal levels. This is important because this opens the opportunity to track one's condition and the effectiveness of treatment using a simple blood test. Some common heart failure medications and therapies that have been shown to decrease pro-BMP levels include diuretics, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, mineral or corticoid receptor antagonists, and cardiac resynchronization therapy. However, there are still some heart failure medications that may cause a temporary rise in pro-EMP levels. These include beta blockers and digoxin. So how would we go about measuring pro-BMP levels? Pro-BMP levels can be tested using a simple blood test. The results are then compared to the normal and diseased ranges. As mentioned before, more research still needs to be done to establish clear cutoff points for normal and disease levels, so currently the levels may vary slightly between physicians and organizations. Let's discuss some recent research that had been done on the use of pro-BMB testing in a clinical setting. Recent research has been conducted to suggest the role of pro-BMB in hospital care. 
In this study, it was suggested that if someone presents with risk factors for congestive heart failure, a pro-BNB level greater than 125 petagram per milliliter would suggest more frequent follow-up and review of the patient's current condition treatments. For those admitted into emergency care due to heart failure, a pro-BNB level that is elevated 30% over an established baseline value suggests intensification of their heart failure therapy as well as more frequent follow-up to monitor their condition. For those hospitalized for heart failure, it is suggested that they can be discharged if their pro-BNB levels are greater than 30% below the levels measured upon admission into hospital. This showcases the ways ProBNB can be integrated into healthcare settings for effective and more precise monitoring of the patient's condition to ensure they're safe before being discharged and if they require intensification of therapy or more frequent monitoring. To summarize, ProBNB testing comes with some advantages and disadvantages. The advantages include the high sensitivity and diagnostic accuracy of the test, differential diagnosis of CHF, tracking prognosis of disease and effectiveness of treatment, and finally, the test is quick, easy to administer, and cheap. On the other hand, as we mentioned before, normal and disease pro-BNB levels are not too well established. High pro-BNB is also associated with other conditions, and for now, the test is not recommended to be used alone for diagnosis. It is important to mention some conclusions reached by Health Canada after they have conducted a review of their own using ProBNB as a diagnostic and prognostic tool. A Health Canada report from May 2021 actually states that a systematic review of studies reveals that ProBNB tests increase physician confidence in diagnosis, reduce length of hospital stay, and are proven to be cost effective. Now for some information that is relevant to you. If you live in Ontario, there is an especially important ongoing pilot program that is offering the administration of ProBNB tests for free. To get this test done, talk to your doctor and if they see it is appropriate, they can order a requisition form for the test. These tests will be available under this program until March 31st, 2023. This concludes our discussion of ProBNB and its role in heart failure, as well as diagnosis and management of disease. If you would like to learn more, I highly recommend watching a webinar on ProBNB that goes into greater detail and depth. Thank you for watching.